Hi, I'm Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to go over some top dumbbell movements for strengths and mass. So now, the big thing is, is that dumbbells have been used for 100 years, but there's a lot of really cool tricks that I'm going to show you, and some of these exercises you may have seen before, but the spin I'm going to put on them is going to change everything. The first exercise is just a normal tricep extension with a twist. Now this is an interesting story on this exercise. 19 years old, and I'm heading over to Westside Barbell. This is 1999. I get there and we get done benching and I'm benching close to 500 pounds at the time. But the real trick was we were doing these at the end and I beat nearly three out of five or six guys at this exercise. And that's when Louie and George Halbert realized I have big potential in the bench press. So let's get to it and I'll show you this movement. So the first thing you do is you bring it up just like you're going to do a normal tricep extension with a hammer grip. You come down here all the way until your arms completely bottom out. Then you turn your pinkies to your temples, touching the side of the dumbbells, and then you straighten it back up like a straight bar. Then you turn it back, come back this way, turn your pinkies to your temples, touch the dumbbells, straighten it like a straight bar. Now the first time I did this exercise, we were doing it with 90 pound dumbbells and we were competing against each other, and I got 12 or 14 reps, I don't quite remember. But at this point, they knew that my arm strength was superior. So as you can see, come down, bottom it out, turn it to your temples, and then straighten it all the way back like a straight bar touching the dumbbells. This exercise is brutal for building a monster bench, monster overhead press, and just big arms in general. The next one is a bent over row, but we're gonna put a twist on this one as well. So the first thing you want to do is turn your thumb towards your body. That gives you a good brace point on the hand, on any straight, on any bench. The next thing is have the dumbbell in a 45 degree. Now when you have it in this particular position, what I want you to do is drop it all the way to the ground. Then I want you to scapular retract it. Then I want you to row it. Then I want you to come all the way down, scapular release, scapular retract, row. You're going to find that doing your dumbbell rows this way is gonna give you way more back activation, way more back mass, and way more control on the scapular muscles, which is the root and cause of most people's shoulder issues. The next exercise that is massive, and I think is slightly forgotten, is just a basic dumbbell pullover. And the reason I'm showing this is because we see so many people, they can't set the bench press bar correctly or have a lot of lat or serratus control, meaning the small muscle that runs kind of in your armpit. So doing these particular exercises not only help you set up for a proper bench, it'll also give you a nice big rib cage, a big set of lats, and also a good stretch on the shoulder, which could be causing shoulder pain. So let's look. So the first thing we do is we want to get something where our head is slightly off the back, not by too much, where we got some, we got some support, but we don't have a lot of, a lot of um, room to get in the way. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hold our hand like a diamond. Now, what I would do is, as you can see, my left hand's on top of my right, so the next set, I'm going to put the, the right on top of the left. That way everything is developed equally. So what I'm going to do is hold it in this position. I'm going to lock my shoulder blades back. That's another thing that people don't talk about. I'm going to lock my shoulder blades back and then I'm going to descend, keeping my arm straight and putting the stretch right where it needs to be and then I'm going to pull it back. Now as people are weaker and don't understand this exercise, you're going to see their shoulders get high. You actually want to keep the shoulders back because that's how you're supposed to bench too. So then we're gonna lock it in, then we're gonna pull it back. Notice I'm using zero speed, 100% focus. A lot of people are really weak right here and it's why they can't set that bench bar correctly when they get it out and lock it here so it's just straight up and down. They're wiggly and wobbly which is taking away a lot of power. So make sure your pullovers are a key staple in your movements with dumbbells. The next exercise is pretty simple, it's just a shrug but it's a shrug with a twist. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the leg that we're doing the shrug side on, and then we're gonna do our shrugs from here. Now notice I'm keeping my toe pretty close to touch in case I need balance, but this is hitting almost every stabilizer in this right leg. It's forcing my abs to stay super tight, and it's keeping me in super, super balance. Now a lot of people with knee issues and hip issues will not be any good at this. And then as you get better, you'll be able to lift your leg, you'll be able to do it without even touching it. I like this exercise immensely for athletes and aging populations because it forces control in the knee. The other thing I've noticed is if you're very strong at these, you're pretty good at them, you're probably your chances of ACL and ankle issues are much, much less. 
So you find like athletes between the ages of 10 and 14, they can't do this very well and can't balance. And then you ask them to go out and do running and calisthenics, it's probably a bad idea. The next thing is turning a dumbbell into something it's not, which is chaotic. So what we're gonna do is take this band and we're gonna take it through the handle. And then what we're gonna do, instead of, this is normally how we would hang a normal weight off the bar or a kettlebell. Obviously that's gonna still allow it to possibly come out. So now what we're gonna do is lace it through itself. Now this thing cannot go anywhere. And now what we can do is take it and now we can bench it. And now this thing is completely chaotic. So if I was weak at this, it would look like this. And then as you get better at it, it's gonna look like a normal weight, like I'm doing right now. The other thing I like is doing this single-sided because now my abs have to stay super tight and strong in order to do this movement. The only thing I say to be wary on is making sure you lock the band like I told you, because if you don't, it could come out and hit you in the face. You don't wanna do that. But this right now, if you're bad at this, it's gonna look like this. So if I were starting over again as a kid or training adolescence, I would be doing, be doing a lot of work like this in order to hit the stabilizers at the same rate as the main muscle groups. That way you have a little bit more transfer. And also this is very important when you're older to help with balance and coordination as those particular properties start to lose their luster over 45, 55 years old. So in closing, we've showed you some new ways to use dumbbells in old exercises. We showed you some one of my favorite tricep exercises that caught the attention of Louis Simmons and how strong my arms were. We showed you some exercise for balance and coordination if you're aging or if you're a youth sports person and you need to get better. The trick is, is that the tools that we've showed you can be used in all phases of training. But the trick is, is when and how to use them. If you need help with that, join the Patreon channel and we can show you some new tricks or get on the online coaching where we can show you how to program this into your particular mesocycle or training season.